talking to a very good friend of mine from New Connecticut. <laughs> New Connecticut, yeah. <laughs> New Connecticut. We always hang out in New York, but he's up in Connecticut. Uh, I knew I was going to get that off. But this is a man who literally has run across America. He broke the world record in, let's see, let me just read the bio. It's a marathon man. The media calls him a marathon man because he's an astonishing accomplishment life story. In just two years, he went from a non-runner to running 2,621 miles across America in just 100 days. He broke the world record for running 146 miles through Death Valley in the harshest and hottest environment on the planet. And he's an international celebrated author and inspirational speaker in the field of personal and business transformation and psychology of success. He's also a celebrity runner and speaker for Hope for Warriors, he's author of four books, hosted a radio show, and he's even appeared on hundreds of television shows, radio shows, and newspaper articles. There's a lot more of this amazing bio, but instead of going through all that, I want to jump in and talk to him and get some tips. And today's episode is focused on how do you achieve and sustain peak performance in your health, your fitness, and your life? So I figure, who better to talk to than someone who obviously knows how to not only attain success, but keep it sustainable over a long period of time in a harsh condition. So without no further ado, say hello to my good friend, Croy. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for jumping on with us. So here's the big question. If someone's going through life, and I'll give you a scenario to maybe talk to. I, I have a client. He's over in Australia. He's in real estate. And this last month, we turned it on at a whole nother level where he's been doing more deals, doing more practice. He's getting everything done at a peak level, health, family, business, relationship, financial, everything. And he's been pushing, 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 pushing. And then I got a text from him this last weekend. It's like, man, I just crashed. I wasn't sick. I wasn't tired. I was just like done. <laughs> And I'm sure you've had those moments throughout your journey and, and you know your athleticism and running, but how do you break through those moments when you hit a wall to allow yourself to continue to consistently get the results you're really after? It's, it's a couple of things. In, in his case, and just like when I was in construction, I used to build houses for people during the day, build houses for me at night, and I could sustain that for about three months or so. And then just like him, I would crash and I would be gone for a week. And literally, I would just be on the couch for a week because you're overdoing it and there's no rest and recovery. There's no balance of any sort. And it's not about having balance every day, but having balance overall in, in the, the long term. So part of that is, is knowing your body and listening. And if there's, there's one great thing that I've learned of running 8,000 miles over two years is to listen to your body. And when you listen to your body, then it'll do whatever you want it to do as long as you're not overdoing it, like you're not over abusing it. So running across America would push me right to the very, very edge. And without listening to my body, I would have just continued to push myself and I never would have been able to finish. But being in tune and listening and taking those messages and actually acknowledging them and doing the right thing is what allowed me to keep going. Uh, for example, when I was running through Dallas, I ran the, the official Dallas Marathon the Big D Marathon, and I ran that in 440, my fastest marathon going across the country. Then for the next week, I was paying for it because I went too hard, too fast, and that just isn't sustainable when you're running a marathon distance a day. And it was because I was trying to show off and, you know, it was a lot of publicity and all that other stuff, and, and I just overdid it. And you got you to gotta be careful for that kind of stuff, whether it's business, relationships, physical, whatever it is, it's, it's a, it all works under the same sort of rules. Makes total sense. Here's a question, though. How do you know the difference between listening to your body and or that little voice in your head that's being like, slow down, you don't need to go so fast, mm -hmm. and it's really just copping out on what you're capable of? It, it's, it's the difference between doing what you want to – the difference between getting the results that you want and making rationalizations for not having it. So a rationalization is when it's all in the mind. And your body can still do it, but your mind is saying, uh, you know, making excuses, saying, no, we don't really need to do it. But then it's over, then it's doing the actions that you have to take in spite of that and listening to your body. So your body will tell you, will literally tell you when to stop. So you'll, in running, for example, it will tell you, you'll, you'll feel pains and you'll feel aches and it's not discomfort. Discomfort's good. 
So going just outside of your threshold of what's comfortable, that's good for you. Maybe even into a little bit of pain, that's still okay. But then you start getting into the, the severe pain or even worse, and that's when you need to stop and slow down. I haven't had a single major injury because I've stopped when I got to the pain part and not gone past that into extreme pain, and that's where injuries, where injuries occur. Otherwise, you're just rationalizing not getting what you want. Makes total sense. Makes total sense. And that, you know, that's that weird factor you got to balance with people because some people will talk themselves out of it just because, of, oh, I don't need to, or oh, I don't want to prove anything, or oh, who cares, versus saying, listen, I'm going to do it anyways. I'm just going to be really intelligent, not let my ego try to push me into something that's not really what I'm supposed to be doing, but listen to my spirit, listen to my gut, listen to my, my mind, body, and soul, and really tap into that inner guide, per se, to give you the feedback as you're moving. That's a huge distinction that a lot of people need to tap into in multiple areas of life. Because how many times have you heard someone say, you know, I was going on the third date with the person and I knew I probably shouldn't have, but I just did it anyways. Oh, or, you know, I was going into this business meeting and I had that gut feeling that it was the wrong place for me. But, you know, who cares? It's just one business deal. <laughs> it's that not listening factor, that not it being in tune with what you're, what's going on that costs you so much down the road. It might not cost you in the moment, but in the long run, oh boy, I'll get you. So that's one piece. Now, the next part I'm thinking about is really getting over those thoughts or getting over those barriers, per se, or those stories. How do you sustain over a long period of time? Seems like such a tricky thing because for some people it's that barrier to entry or that barrier where they go too short, too fast, and then they just slam into a wall. For other people, they kind of get started, but then they really have trouble. They may go five days or seven days or six days, but going a hundred days to them is like, oh, death. How do you sustain and enjoy that process as you start to get a habit of the same type of routine going on? How do you fall in love with that? It, it's a, it can be done a couple of different ways. One is, for example, running across America, that was a massive goal, and that kept me inspired. And each day I was speaking to a, a different at-risk audience, so they inspired me to keep going. So one way of doing it is having a massive goal that's so big that it inspires you. And the other part of it is, is something like running, as an example, is doing it in a way that's fun. So... You know, I go out and I, like tonight I had to run. I, I missed my run this morning, so I had to do it this evening. I didn't want to do it this evening, but if I missed it today, I know the guilt in the morning would be worse than going out and running five miles tonight. So I did that tonight, but if I had a partner to do it with and I was meeting someone and we went and ran five miles together, that's a whole lot more fun. I mean, that's like ten times more fun than doing it on my own. So doing it with something like a partner, then that makes it fun and, and, when it's, and not expecting perfection. So in as run, using running as an example again, sometimes I, I go out for a run and it's just, it just feels like garbage. And it's a terrible run and I'm running way slower and my breathing isn't right and I get through the three, four, five miles, whatever I'm doing that day, but it just feels like garbage. It doesn't matter because I did that and the, the, the consistency is what's going to allow the next day or the day after to be really great. But if I was to expect every day to be an eight-minute, five-mile run – you know, running eight minutes a mile for five miles and expecting that every day, that's unrealistic, at least for me because I'm not that kind of a fast runner. I can do it sometimes, but I can't do it every day. The same thing with nutrition is expecting perfection and never having a potato chip or a dessert or whatever. I mean, it's unrealistic to never, ever not cheat on your diet. you got to have a little bit of latitude for and some flexibility. Gotcha. So, so far, listen to your body. Trust your inner guide. Create a community to make it more fun as far as the sustainability piece. And I agree with you that if you're working business deals and you're up till late at night and you've got three people willing to stick with you, it's a lot more fun in the office than if you're sitting by yourself at you know 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 at night, just hustling through stuff. It's always fun with a community, um, obviously in other parts of life. And then the, the final piece we have as well that we talked about so far is flexibility. Really having that latitude, as you said, or flexibility to bend to the situation and get stuff done. I know one especially specifically talking about health and fitness is running a half marathon or a 5k or whatever or one of these mud runner things you know have those like two or three of these planned a year because now you have a goal and if you don't have any sort of a goal then it's just a matter of will you know can you do it by pure will and some people can especially if you're conditioned that way 
but a lot of people can't. But if you have that race coming up in this part of the community, you have that race coming up, and then that makes it exciting and gives you something to look forward to, a specific attainable event that has a drop-dead date. You know, that race comes and goes, and that's it. It's done. Awesome. So set those mile markers. Set those really hard, like you said, a hard stop goal date of, like, it's going to happen at this time regardless if I'm ready or not, so I better be ready. And it gives you something to look forward to along the journey. So translating this to life, how are you going to – just a handful of questions for everyone listening. Number one, how are you going to tap into your inner guide more often? Number two, how can you create community around the major goals you're working on to really help not only attain the goals but sustain it and make it fun through the – have the circle of influence around you of all the people supporting you along your journey? Number three, how can you have more fun and flexibility in what you're doing to make it more enjoyable? And number four – how are you going to set some hard stop goals or some deadlines, some marathons per se, or some fun races along the journey to give yourself some days, times, dates, and locations to say, hey, I have to perform by this date and time or else. If you were to give everyone one last tip, one last simple thing they can take away, what would you do for them? The, the biggest thing is consistency. It's not glamorous to talk about, but consistency is what's going to get you what you want. And you're going to get it faster, and it's going to be easier, and that's sustainable. And if you do, for some reason, miss a few months of exercise, as an example, if you've been, sustain uh, if you've been consistent in the past, it'll come back to you really quick. And you'll, only, you'll, you'll actually want to do it again. So the more consistent you are, the more lasting that's going to be, not only now in this part of your life, but forever. And that's no difference between health, nutrition, fitness, relationships, business, you know, everything. It's all, it's all across the board. It all, all, all works out. Very cool. I like it, and I agree a thousand percent. So if people want to learn more about you, if they want to take this awesome test on your website that I just took, told me I'm a rock star, I agree with it a hundred percent, where do they go? Uh, the best place to go is croysather.com. C R O-I-X-S-A-T-H-E-R.com. Very cool. We'll make sure to post it underneath the video as well oh. in the uh, subjects so they can go there. Very, very cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us on a quick episode of JRC TV. If you're tuning in, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I hope you go use it. Um, if you go to my blog, we're going to have a download of the worksheet we talked uh, or that with all the questions we talked about today for you as a free gift. And besides that, I hope you learned something great, apply it, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks so much.